everyone. Today we're cooking two meals. We're doing a walnut crusted salmon and we're also doing a balsamic glazed chicken breast. Both will be served with a Brussels sprout and cauliflower roasted side dish. So I'm going to go ahead and start it on the crust for the salmon. It's super easy, two ingredients only, walnuts and cinnamon. You're going to crush your walnuts. If you have a pistol and mortar, great. If you don't, you can do what I'm doing and just using the back end of a wooden spoon. And you're just going to crush the walnuts in little pieces like that. It should take you all of three minutes. Pete's videotaping right now so I can do the commentary, the narrative. Hello, Humana. Just make sure you crush enough to um, coat however much pieces of salmon you're cooking for the night. So you're gonna put those walnuts all over the... All over the salmon. All over the salmon. Is there anything else we're gonna marinate it with? Um, no, it's gonna be walnuts, cinnamon, a little bit of olive oil in the pan. All right. And that is it. You cook it for however well done you like your salmon. Perfect. I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of cinnamon in there. Cinnamon, all right. That's about it. Cinnamon's pretty strong. So cinnamon and walnuts, people. That is it. Perfect. All right. And you're just going to coat your salmon in the crust. That looks fabulous, actually. Yep. It's super easy. Tons of good fats. DHA. Michelle Bernstein Alonzo. <laughs> Very easy. People will think you spent more time on it than you actually did. Okay, guys, so we're going to make our side dish now, which is going to be a roasted cauliflower and Brussels sprout mix. So, the Brussels sprouts, if you haven't cooked them before, they come actually as a whole singular piece, and all we did was cut the ends off and cut them in half. Get a little close up of that. Zooming in, zooming in. So the Brussels sprouts, they were big. We cut them in half, like she said, and cut the tips off. And the cauliflower, if you haven't cooked this before, it comes as a whole head. We used a whole head today. And all you're gonna do is rinse it off, break it in half, and cut out the stems, and then use the pieces like you would be with broccoli. Just cut off the florets at the top. Perfect. So these are rinsed, all chopped up, ready to go. I'm gonna put these in on the plate. So we're roasting them today. So you want to set your oven between 425 and 450. Make sure you leave it cracked open so we get some air in there. And we're going to drizzle a little olive oil and salt and pepper. Simple. Don't go too heavy with your salt. Let's see how this works. I've always wanted to be a Hollywood director, FYI, Humana. Sure. And Michelle always wanted to be a Food Network actress slash chef. I also chef. wanted to know how to use this pepper thing. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh, it's just back and forth, doesn't it? Oh, okay. Got it? It's got it. Sorry. Back and forth. All back right, and right. forth. Okay, good enough. Big shout out to Norm Woods. Big shout out. Oops, I lost one. Trying to do that. Man down. <laughs> and you're just going to use your fingers to coat and try to get the olive oil on all of them. And if you haven't roasted uh, vegetables before, they're going to brown really nicely and give it a slightly crispy outer edge and it'll be soft in the center. You can roast beets, you can roast uh, garlic, you can roast onions, um, and they all are delicious. Hey gang, the oven is finally ready, so we're going to get these vegetables to roast. Follow me. And for roasting, you're gonna leave it just a little bit open, right about there. In about 30 to 45 minutes, we'll be ready. All right, so we're at 450, and that's it. So 45 minutes, we'll be ready. Make sure you guys set your clocks. Set your clocks, and you'll be able to tell they're gonna be a little bit browned on the outside. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to get out of behind the camera and say hi to you, because Michelle was all alone, and I felt guilty. Um, real quick, this is my one tip of the, the film, the video here. Uh, 
We put it for 45 minutes at 450. Make sure that you leave it propped just a tad bit open, okay? Um, the reason behind this, I don't know why, so we're gonna ask Michelle. That's just what you do when you roast because them. Because I don't know. I don't know the exact reason for that. So when you <laughs> roast them, you put it at 450 and just prop it open a little bit. Um, I suggest you turn your air on when you do that because I'm yes. sweating profusely. Yes. Okay? Yes. And uh, that's it. Okay, so we're going to start heating up the pan for the salmon. You're going to place the pan around oh, medium to medium low heat. Oil on the pan, not too much. Swirl it around. All right, you're going to wait for that to get a little hot. Um, the way to test if it's getting hot is you're going to wet your hands, flip the pan, and when the oil sizzles, you know the salmon's ready to go in. So we're going to go ahead and grab the salmon. In the fridge. Yeah, don't leave your salmon out while you're cooking your veggies. Food safety, guys. <laughs> she taught me a lesson today, Humana. All right. Okay, guys, we're going to make sure the pan is hot enough for the salmon. So an easy way is just to wet your pan, flick some water on the pan. When you hear that sizzle, you know it's ready. So it's already popping, so it's hot enough. Get your salmon. And now it starts cooking. Yummy. Look at that, gang. Little walnut, cinnamon, encrusted salmon, right? Yep. Okay guys, I think the salmon is ready to be flipped. You'll know it when you take a peek under and you have a little golden brown color. So we'll see now. Perfect. And you're going to cook it to your liking. I like mine medium well. If you like it less cooked, that's fine. You like it all the way cooked. Totally up to you. And it's a, you said medium low? Um, it's on medium to low. Mm -hmm. Medium to low. There you go, gang. So it's just, just when it's brown at the bottom, she flipped it over. And we're going to do the same thing the other side. I'd say, what, we're seven minutes out? Eight minutes? Yeah, about that. All right. Okay, guys, I think our salmon is done. It's a golden brown on both sides, as you can see. So, put it over here, and we're going to get the veggies ready. Okay, guys, so I'm checking out the veggies. I think that we were a little skimp on our olive oil. So, if this happens to you, it's not a big deal. Just drizzle a little bit more over it, toss them, and throw them back in. If you have a spray olive oil, that might even be easier. So, I'm just going to drizzle a little extra and just toss them up and close the door back up. These babies have probably another 10 minutes. If you notice, they're browning really nicely. She'll give it a crispy yet soft in the middle flavor. By the way, they smell amazing, gang. You have no idea. I'm sitting in this kitchen and my mouth is watering. And close it up. Remember, don't close it all the way. Okay, guys, we're gonna get the pan ready for the chicken. So again, I have it on about medium heat. I'm gonna throw some olive oil in the pan. And some chopped garlic. So you can use fresh garlic. We just bought it out of the jar, whatever's easier for you. I'm gonna use maybe about, I'm not gonna do too much. Maybe about half a tablespoon for this. And let that get hot. And once it does, we'll add the chicken in. Okay guys, the garlic is already sizzling and slightly turning, so we're going to throw the chicken in. And you can just lay it right on top. Try to squeeze a little more in here. Mm, that'll be good for now. And once they start to slightly cook, not all the way because they're thinly cut, you're going to flip them. Okay guys, this chicken is ready to be flipped. And in about another minute, we're gonna add that balsamic vinegar and finish it off. Okay, yep. guys, this chicken's about to be cooked. It looks like it's almost done. So I'm gonna throw the balsamic on now. You can be as generous as you like, depending on how much of the sweetness flavor of balsamic you enjoy. Smells this, amazing, this folks. This will caramelize. So probably in about one more minute, this will be done. All right, guys, we're all done. Chicken's ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the plate for us. You were in this kitchen. Our veggies are also done, so we're gonna pull those out of the oven. They should be lightly brown, a little bit. Oh, nice. Take a good, you can zoom in on those if you wanna take a look at those. All right, and let's make our plates and eat. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks amazing. These are cruciferous vegetables. They have a lot of anti-cancer properties. I'm losing vegetables left and right today. We love it. We love it. Imperfection is perfection. You can't eat too much veggie, so you can eat this much or you can eat double this. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Now remember folks, she cooked the Brussels sprouts and the cauliflower together. So you guys can take this for lunch tomorrow, or the next, whenever the next day when you cook. You know, the salmon you probably don't want to take with you the next day, but the chicken you can definitely take with you. The Brussels sprouts and cauliflower, you can definitely microwave that. Heat it up the next day. Yep. It's, it's a nice little lunch. Save the money, folks. Eat, eat at work instead of going for lunch. Wow. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Peace and love, everyone.